All right, this is video six, the archery education series. This time we're gonna try to discuss how animals move with the reaction of the bow noise or the arrow noise. I hope you guys enjoy the information and thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't, I appreciate it. Keeps me motivated to keep making these videos. First thing we need to do is we need to figure out what exactly is the rate of acceleration an animal can move at. Since they're starting from a resting position, we have to approach it from this perspective. So there's two things originally I looked at here. The first is gravity, and the second is to video evidence. Going through this, a animal with its head down that has the ability to throw its head up or use its back, back muscles can actually accelerate itself faster than the rate of gravity in the vertical direction. From video evidence that I could find and other videos of this nature, roughly 50 feet per second squared is the acceleration that an animal can achieve if it throws its head in the air to accelerate its body downwards. So we're gonna use 50 feet per second as our acceleration to determine how much an animal can move for a given rate of time in reaction to bow noise and arrow noise. And we're gonna use a 50 because it'll produce the largest result. So that would be our theoretical maximum of how much the animal can move should it choose to react to the bow noise or to the arrow noise. So here's another thing we need to look at. We need to understand that the speed of sound, in this case we're gonna assume is 1,125 feet per second. We're giving a vital diameter of five inches is our intended aiming location. That'll be important for the figures that I show illustrating the animal movement coming up. From this we can use a kinematic equation for a rough estimation of how much distance the animal can cover in a given time. And that's just one half the acceleration times the time squared equals our change in distance. So we did as we looked at the travel time for a variety of different arrows and arrow speeds from 330 feet per second all the way down to 210 feet per second. This does include two different bows in this data set, one a light pounded short draw length and the other a high poundage long draw length. But in this test, the more important thing is the velocity. If you have a lighter arrow at one of these velocities, it will lose speed a little faster, so the time will slightly increase. This will give a, a general illustration of the movement potential that the animal can do. All right, so the first, first drawing we're gonna look at here is animal movement for a light and fast arrow. Now there's four color illustrations on this graph, so let me go over what those are. The blue we're considering our vital area of, ideally would be aiming somewhere within this blue circle. If you are, then that blue circle would float inside the radius of the other three. So for a 330 feet per second arrow, the green at 20 yards is almost over the top, indicating that the animal has very little ability to move. In fact, at 20 yards, the animal movement with a 330 grain arrow is less than a quarter of an inch. At 30 yards though, you have quite a bit of movement. And should you have been aiming more center of mass in the vertical direction, the shoulder comes into play at 30 yards even for a light arrow of 330 feet per second. The potential to hit that shoulder blade does exist depending on where your shot broke or where your aiming spot was. And then at 40 yards, Nearly 50% of this circle encompasses a non-vital area, and that's something we have to consider is that if, if an animal is reacting to bow noise at 40 yards, even with a light arrow, you're not gonna beat this animal here. Out to 30 yards, I think this fast arrow has pretty good lethality potential of hitting a vital area before the animal moves or reacts. We're gonna start looking at heavier arrows and slower arrows, so let's see what the difference is. This is probably one of the best arguments for light air and fast arrows, is that animals do move, and it is very important, but it's also something that's completely unpredictable. So we can't aim below the animal, anticipating the animal moves, because it might not. So when we step up to 290 feet per second, we can see that now our 30 yard range for a 290 feet per second arrow has substantial area that includes shoulder, spine, liver, stuff that would be considered a less than vital hit or a less than ideal hit for sure. And in potential, a non-vital hit if it's in the spine or high scapula, things of that nature. Of course, at 40 yards with this arrow, if the animal had a 40 yard distance of reaction time, it's gonna be a very dangerous shot, a likelihood of missing the animal for sure, uh, and a potential high potential of wounding the animal. So now we're gonna move on to the moderately heavy arrow at 600 grains and 250 feet per second. At 20 yards, you're still encompassing the vitals with very little interaction with the shoulder blade. However, 30 and 40 continues to get worse. It's not until we go to 
the low poundage setup, if I would say a moderately heavy arrow or potentially a heavy arrow here at 500 grains, and that's at 200 feet per second. Now we do have a potential, even at 20 yards, to encompass a non-vital area within the shoulder blade and some of the liver. 30 and 40 yards is astronomical. In fact, the 40 yards is, is impossible for the animal to, to move vertically that far because it'd have to go through the earth. But I wanted to illustrate the animal potential movement. At 40 yards, it's going to move laterally, forward, backwards, rolling significantly more than the other setups. I wanna note that this, this doesn't play into ethics at all here because we have no control on whether the animal does or does not react. And if they don't react, then you're going to hit right where you're aiming. This is purely a discussion of an advantage that speed has over a heavier arrow system. So now we're gonna dip in a little bit more because everything we've talked about so far would be the animal reacting to the bow. So what if they react to the arrow? And for this case, we're gonna assume that the animal doesn't react to the arrow until the arrow is within 20 yards of the animal. Kind of a zone of comfort. When the arrow breaks that zone, the animal then begins to react to the arrow moving towards it. So we're gonna compare the 20 yard distance for all arrows. As we can see, green is that 330 feet per second. The pinkish color is the 290. The yellow is our 250 and the red is our 210 feet per second. So with the heavier poundage bow, most of the arrow weights have very little interaction with a non-vital area. The 600 grain does have some potential to hit shoulder, specifically scapula. However, it's still generally encompassing a, a vital zone of the animal. That heavier arrow would have a little bit more potential of breaking the scapula and going through, but it still has a potential of hitting bone. Where the 450 and 350 do not at 20 yards, based on animal reaction, should you be aiming somewhere within the blue circle. Now, the 210 feet per second arrow, on the other hand, does have the potential for scapula, liver, things of that nature, should the animal move. But one of the arguments that I've heard quite often, and I think it's fair to consider and evaluate, is that the slower the arrow moves, generally the quieter the arrow is. Now we're assuming that the arrow geometry is the same, the veins are the same, the tuning is the same, you know, the same arrow shaft, but just moving slower will generally make less noise. And that's simply due to the fact that the drag is so much less because the velocity is dropped. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to reduce the effective distance that the animal reacts by the difference in velocity of the arrows. So the premise here is that the animal won't react as quickly because the arrow doesn't sound as loud, maybe giving the animal a false sense that it has more of a zone of safety than it does. Even doing this, the faster arrows are still going to perform better. We took our 330 as the baseline, it has no change. And everything else we're determining the velocity difference between the fast arrow at 330 feet per second and the, whatever the other arrow speed is, so 290, 250 and 210. We're reducing the time the animal has to react. In doing this, we see that all of them get to come a, a lot closer to our vital area with very little movement at all at 20 yards. The 210 feet per second, however, still does encompass some scapula. Everything we've shown is assuming that the animal is completely stopped when you take a shot. This doesn't account for if right before you release the arrow, if the animal starts to take a step, that's another variable that we just simply can't predict. That's something that I didn't approach in these illustrations here, is we didn't look at whether the animal was, was stepping forward or moving when you took the shot. There's, there's just so many variables that could happen with animal movement. And I think the biggest thing we should consider is try to make our equipment as quiet as possible. Try to make our arrow flight with whatever your arrow you're intending to shoot, fast, light, heavy, I don't care, as quiet as possible. Really do some evaluation on fletching noise and profile, helical angle, things of that nature to make sure that our setup is as efficient and quiet as possible on its way to the animal. I think our bow noise is also very critical. I have seen animals react to vibration noise coming off of a bow from loose screws and things of that nature. I just want to note again that all these videos are, are simply a discussion of here's the pros and cons. Shoot what you want, shoot what you like. Next video is coming up. We've got I'm still going to do some broadhead videos. I'm getting a hold of a bunch of different broadheads and we're going to do some testing on those that I think you guys will find interesting. I'm in the process of actually building a wind tunnel for aero systems. We're going to test some veins and see what other stuff stuff we can uh, maybe learn. And then of course I've got uh, bow tuning, things of that nature coming up. Like and subscribe if you haven't. I appreciate it. Till next time.